Hey guys, it's May May, and today we are finishing this policy envelope mini album. Now, when we left off, we had built the policy envelopes, we had bound them together, and we bound the covers on. And I ask you guys what kind of closure you would like to see. And from the majority of the comments, I heard magnetic closure, I heard wraparound closure, um, I heard what else was there? Uh, elastic strap closure. But I decided I would combine two of those and do a wraparound closure with magnets. I also had somebody suggest that I use a stamp set that I have from my stamp line, which is called Santa's Key, and I wanted to show it to you. It's this stamp set, and they suggested I use this lock and this key, and we're going to. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna leave that out, and we're gonna go ahead and prep the lock and key real quick. I have already created one off screen, but I wanna show you how I did it. Ignore these guys, these were a practice and they didn't work, but this other one did. So here's what we're gonna do. I've got the stamp on my block. We're going to emboss it. This is Versamark ink, which is a wet, sticky ink that is made for embossing. Let me do it the other way, it'll be easier. And it's got that spongy ink pad. So I'll get that good and inked up and I'm just gonna stamp it on the page. What I tried originally on these guys, I tried using just my Distress Ink, but I just didn't think it looked so good. So I thought, now nah, we're gonna dress it up a little bit and here's how we're gonna do it. Still using this piece of scrap paper, we're gonna take some gold embossing powder. It's actually called Gilded from Brutus Monroe. I think this is a beautiful embossing powder and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just tap this out onto the page. I didn't stress about using a powder, like a, uh, a prep powder, you know, an anti-static powder or anything, because the way I'm using this, I'm cutting most of all of it away. So this is really gonna work just fine. So there it is, it's stuck to the Versa Mark, or the Versa Fine, nope, the Versa Mark Ink. It's stuck to the Versa Mark Ink, which is a watermark pad, so it's stuck there only, and I have this left, and I need to tump that out. I just closed this up for no reason. So I'm gonna tump this back into the container, just like so. And now we need our heat tool. I've been asked several times lately what heat tool I use, and it's this one by Marvy, the Embossing Heat Tool Model 2500. Um, this is actually on the recommendation of Christopher Allen, who owns Brutus Monroe. He was the one who told me about this, so this is the one I use, and I love it. So let's emboss this guy. His embossing powder melts so pretty. Do you see the shine on that? That is so pretty. Okay, now you can see I have these little shades of color here. Here's what I did. I wanted the paper darker because I didn't feel like there was enough of a contrast. Now in hindsight, you could just do this on darker paper, but if you're ever doing this kind of stuff, you're just playing around and seeing what you can come up with, and you're like, you know, I really wish this paper was darker. Don't scrap it. Just grab out some Distress Ink and ink over it and make it darker. This is exactly what I did to get that look on the other one. So when you're playing around and you're doing mixed media stuff, just mix stuff up and see what you get. Now I also, and this might have been a little counterintuitive, but maybe not. I'll show you the other step that I did. I took a baby wipe and I wiped over the top to get the Distress Ink off of the gilded um, powder. It didn't take a whole lot off, but it did bring that shine back. You don't really have to use a baby wipe. I just had that handy and I used it. But remember, Distress Ink reacts with water, so I got a little bit of haloing, but it still did what I wanted it to do, no big deal. Then I just cut this guy out just like this very easy it's straight cut on four sides and then those little corners now I've got this little lock all cut out he's laying on my paper and you can see the stain over here this is where it came from this is clear nail polish I didn't have any crystal accents I didn't have any glossy accents I mean or any crystal effects and I was like you know what I got clear nail polish let's just see what happens so I took the nail polish to the lock on the paper and I just let it dry here and I coated it really, really thick. And this is actually a clear nail polish I keep in my craft room. I've actually used it on my son's derby cars because I think it makes a really pretty clear shine. Um, I used it before triple thick. Now I use triple thick on those cars, but this worked perfect for what I was looking for here. And I just let that dry. To show you what I get, this is the key that I did exactly the way I just showed you. And you can see the shine from the nail polish. And then this one is the um, lock. And you can also see the shine from the nail polish. I did that one earlier. I think those look really cool. So those will be going on the front of our album. Now, I want to show you how we're gonna put together this flap closure. 
I'm gonna use some chipboard. And what I did was I cut these two pieces the same height as my, as my album, but I decided I wanted to cut the end about an inch thick. So I cut this piece of chipboard one inch, okay? This piece is gonna flap over the top and I cut it at two and a quarter inches. But it, it's not quite ready yet. I wanna do one more thing to it. I want to have like a ticket a ticket edge. So I'm going to put this on my cutting mat and I'm going to use the inch markers here and I'm going to mark an inch down on both sides, top and bottom. So an inch here and an inch here. Now I'm going to take that to my cutting or my paper trimmer and I'm going to make little notches. So I'm going to line those notches up on my cutting mark of my trimmer. Let me get that a little closer. And then I'm going to cut that away. And that's going to give me that notch that I'm looking for. I'm going to do that on both sides. Cut that away. And now this will be the front actual flap closure. Now, for us to be able to bind those pieces onto our album, we need some binding strips. And that's what these guys are. They're an inch wide, and they're the same height as my album, which is three, and I want to say three quarters of an inch. I'm pretty sure that's right. This is where I'm going to score them in half and turn these into those binders for the album side. So I'm going to score it at half an inch on each one of them. And I've made four. I'll show you why. I think I'm going to put one on the inside of every hinge and one on the outside of every hinge. I think. We may just end up doing the insides, but I think I want to have it nice and clean. I'll show you what that means. So I'm putting my sticky tape on either side of the score mark just so it can have adhesive. And I want to show you guys a trick that I learned from someone, and I don't remember who it was, but it was somebody at a card party who said they learned this on YouTube. You take the edge of your acrylic block, the sharp edge, lay it to the end of your tape and pull, and you get a perfectly clean edge every time. Oh my goodness, what a brilliant idea. If you guys know whose YouTube channel she got that tip from, let us know, because I don't know who it is, and I want to give credit where credit is due, but I think it's a brilliant tip. Okay, now I'm going to fold these guys backwards. Two of them back, and then I'm going to fold two of them forward, and you'll see why. All right, let's start with the little side. This is the hinge that's going to come around the side. And I'll pull this off here, this backer off. And we're going to line this up. Now, here's the thing. The score mark is part of the design of the album. You need it to bend. So you do not want to cover it up. You want to make sure this chipboard piece does not lay on that score line, but at the score line. So line that piece up and that allows your score to be able to bend nice and clean. See that? Now for this side, there's a tip. Once you've got one piece of chipboard down, we're gonna attach this piece to it, okay, so that it flaps around. You can stand this piece up in that crook that's already there, okay? Then you can lift this piece up to it so that way you know you have plenty of room for that bend to happen. See how smooth that works? Then I'm gonna burnish these down real well. All right, we need to put another piece on this end, because we I'm gonna do it like this, because we need to attach this one to the book itself. So we'll get this guy ready to go. Remember, right to the score line, but not crossing it. You want to leave plenty of room for that score line to operate. And then put this to the book. I'm just going to open the book up where I can see what I'm doing and bring this one piece over. Again, you can do it. Let's do it this way. You can take this and you can put it right into that crease. Okay. And then wrap that piece of paper around to catch and then just lay it down to burnish it down. Now you'll be able to see what I was talking about. See this? So our album's gonna, our um, door, our flap is gonna wrap around like this. Now, can you see how raw this is on the inside? I don't like how that looks. So that's why I wanted to create these extra two binders. These two are gonna go on the inside. So here's one, and I'm gonna put it into place first. I'm gonna fold it so I can see where my score line is. So that score line gets right in that crease just like so. Fold this one back and peel that backer away. 
And now I feel like not only will it be sturdier, but it'll look cleaner and neater because we'll mat this and you'll never see that little bend in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and do that on both sides. Okay, so we're going to have to make these bend a little bit. So we're going to work them because now we've kind of stiffened them up, which is also a good thing because it gives it a little stability, a little more stability. So now you can see that these guys can go just like that. Now I want to put a magnetic closure under here, but not yet, not till we're ready to mat it. What I do want to do now is add a piece here because I decided I want to cover this up, but I don't want to make it stiff because look how this book will expand. And I left myself enough room here. Can you see I've got some expansion room in the end down there? So I don't want to make it stiff. Here's what we're going to do. So I've taken two pieces of the same paper we're using in the paper pad for the envelopes on the inside. These pieces are cut three and three quarters by four inches, so they're the same height as the book, okay? We're going to glue these together, and I'm going to use a good bit of glue because that's what's going to give me stability on this piece. I've laid down a piece of scrap paper behind here, and I'm going to load this guy up with a good bit of glue, like I said, and it's going to seep out when I lay it down. But for me, this is going to add stability to this piece as it opens and closes over time. So you could Mod Podge this if you wanted to. I just think this glue is going to work just fine. I want to make sure I get my letters in the right way. I'm the worst about orientation, getting things right. Then just glue these together and create a nice, strong, sturdy piece of cardstock. There it comes seeping out now that I'm pushing. That's a good thing. I want it to be everywhere. Then we got to let that guy dry. So while that page is drying, I want to show you what these guys are. These little pieces here are two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch square. These are going to be where I put my Instagram photos. So I'm going to put these in the book as mats. And then when I get my photos printed out, I can just come right in and put them in. My Instagram photos are going to print at two inches. So that'll be perfect for these little guys. So let's do some prep work to those. The first thing I want to do is I want to stamp them all to say place photo here. Because I decided if I decide not to keep this, by the way, this comes from the action stamp set. It says place photo here, but if I decide not to keep this and give it to somebody else and I have place photo here where it needs to be, then they'll know exactly what to do with their Instagram album. So I'm going to go through and stamp this on all of these pieces. Now I cut a bunch of pieces. I cut enough for one mat for each page plus some for those pockets on the inside when we put those inserts in. I wanted to make sure we had enough there as well. So now these guys are all prepped and ready to be glued into the book. That took a minute, but not really bad, maybe five or six minutes to ink all of those. Based on my design, I know that I want some blue paper to go right here before I put that wraparound piece down. I just wanted some blue on the cover. I felt like I was gonna have a lot of other colors here. I don't exactly know what's going here yet, but we'll figure that out. But I know I want this there. And you remember how on our little binding pieces we did the um, embossing and the inking? I wanna do that on the front. So let me get a folder in the cuddle bug out. So I got the cuddle bug, an A plate, and a B plate here. I've got this same folder that we used for those um, binding pieces, and I'm gonna put this blue piece in it because I think that'll be pretty on the front to match. And then we'll just run this through. I'll place this on here and put a B on top, and that will emboss it. So now this guy is nicely embossed. I love this folder, but we need to ink it so we can see that design better. So I'm gonna use my ink blending tool without adding anything to it. I'm gonna lightly go over these pieces or these little um, designs to bring them to the front so we can see them. It kind of just pops them out so you can see the design that's on the page, especially using these contrasting colors. I think it looks really cool. And it looks, it reminds me of ceiling tile, like old ceiling tiles. Now, I'm going to take it to the edge and ink those edges up to make them a little darker. So here's my magnets. And I use these same magnets on my mini albums all the time, and I get asked where I get them. I get these from my friend Jamie, who has Punch Place Plus, and they are working to change their name to Craft Chameleon. So you may see it listed that way too, but it is Punch Place Plus, and I'll put a link below for you guys. And today I'm using two magnets. I have been known in the past to use a magnet on one side and a little metal ring on the other, which she also carries. But I've decided today to use magnets on both sides because I think it's gonna need it with all the chipboard. This piece is actually gonna hide one and that's why I wanted to go ahead and show you those now. So we'll bring this back over. What's gonna happen is this piece is gonna get mounted right here, okay? And I cut it a quarter of an inch shy all the way around to the front. This magnet is gonna go underneath it. What I want to do is see where I want it to go. So I'm thinking in this area because I want it to be pretty strong. 
So I'm just gonna move this away and this is about where I want it to go. So I'm gonna get some sticky tape, which this is what I use to do this. This sticky tape works really well. And I'm gonna put some right here. And I'm not worried about this one yet. We'll deal with that one in a little bit. Right now, I just wanna make sure I get this one where I want it. Looks good, I'm gonna peel this backer off. And then I'm gonna place the magnet on it. Just about like that, okay? I like to, and you don't have to, but I like to take more sticky tape and put on top of it just to make sure it stays in place when I put the paper on. So I'm gonna cross this over in an X shape. I think it just helps to seal it down. It doesn't hurt anything. We're using two magnets, so they're gonna be plenty strong enough. This is not gonna hurt anything. So now I've got that in there nice and tight. Now I'm gonna use sticky tape on this as well because I think it's better to use the sticky tape in this instance because you want it to dry instantly. The wet um, would not dry instantly. Now I've put a lot of tape on here and it might be too much tape in some opinion, but I'll tell you, I want this to last forever and hold everything nice and sturdy. So I'd rather have too much tape than not enough. And you can see that I put tape around all the edges and in the middle there. All right, let's seal this guy in. We're getting to the first step of the pretties. So let's get it lined up nice and neat. Just like that, and then press this down. Now, one thing that's really awesome, by embossing this paper, it kind of gives some movement to accept that magnet. A lot of times I find when you're using a flat piece of paper, you'll kind of get some funny bubbles in the, around it. But because this is embossed, it kind of has a give and it works really well. So now that magnet is in place. Let's go ahead and put this magnet on so that we know it's in the right place and I'll show you how we do it. I'm gonna take this other magnet and just drop it here, okay? By the way, these are plus and minus magnets as you can imagine, so there's a right side and a wrong side, but it'll find it, okay? So you saw how that did, and now we can put sticky on the back of here to figure out where it goes. I'm gonna take a little sticky tape and put it on the back of that magnet. Just like this. Peel that little backer off. I'm just gonna wad that sticky up on top of that magnet like that, and get that into place where I want it, and then I'm gonna flip this side over to it. Now what, now what I did when I sat this into place is I made sure this cover was all the way to the top of our little piece there so we have all of our room, okay? So now we can lift this off and our magnet is right where it needs to be and we can close it in on this side. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add the extra tape all right, so now we can cut a piece to go here. Now you're thinking, but you've got these funny angles. It's no big deal, I'll show you how to fix that. We're gonna measure this piece. Actually, I can use my cut board for this or my cutting mat. This is one, two and a half inches wide, okay? So I'm gonna cut a piece that's two and a quarter inch wide by three and a half tall, and then I can just do the same trim I did earlier. So on this piece, I went ahead and embossed it just like the other one, inked it, and I've added a lot of sticky tape so it is ready to go. So this guy is now going to sit right here. It's going to cover our other magnet. We're going to rub that into place so that all that sticky gets where it needs to be, and it's going to house that magnet for us. And I'm telling you, by embossing the paper, you just get a better um, lay down around those. Now when we close this together, it closes nice and snug. See that? I love these magnets, they're awesome. Now let's do the side. So here's that side piece, and I'll show you what it's gonna look like. It's gonna wrap around like this. I just think it'll be cute on the other side to kind of um, give it something to cover up the binding and give it a little weight on that end. So I want to do some punching on the end with that same border punch we used on our binder pieces in the middle. So I'm gonna take this guy and just go ahead and punch through it. I've got it punched on both sides. And like I said, it's gonna go like this and I wanna lay it out just to give me a feel for where I need to put my sticky tape. So it looks like, about like that. So let me get the tape ready for that. I'm gonna put about two strips on each end going right close to that little border punched edge. And use that little trick to get a nice clean edge. That is an amazing trick, I'm just telling you. Keeps you from going over the edge. See, I went over right there, but I can trim that, no big deal. Perfect. 
perfect. All right, I'm going to peel one side off to start with. It's going to go right here. I'm not going to stick that down fully just yet. I want to make sure I've got the wrap in the right place. Yes, we're in good shape. Now I will stick that down. Okay, before I get crazy, almost forgot. I need to mat the back because I want this to wrap over whatever paper I put on the back. So let's do that really quick. And let's do, how big do I need this piece to be? Five and a half a three and a half so let me find some paper for that so I found this polka dot which I think is cute and it's gonna sit right back here now I'm gonna use wet glue on it because I don't have to worry about it drying instantly so I can give it a little time back here it's not holding anything in place or anything like that so a little art glitter glue and just mat this guy on how cute is that I love it all right now we can wrap this guy around and get it right where we need it to be so I'm gonna match it up with the front I can kind of look at it from the top and see where they go and I'm just gonna rub that down into place nice and snug so see that now we have that rounded edge we have the front and it will open nice and big see how big that opens and it gives us some room I love that let's do the cover here and the cover here as far as the background piece then we'll put our lock and our key into place so now we've gotten a lot done. It looks like I did a lot when you weren't looking, but really I didn't. I want to show you. I just cut another piece to mat that front, just like we did on the inside, remember? I cut a strip for here, okay? And then I put a strip here. So that's really all I did was just cover that up. I'm loving this album so much. Okay, now I want to add the lock and the key to the front, but I want to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the key, and the top of that key has this pretty frilly uh, design on it. And I don't have any of this blue paper with a design, but I think it'd be pretty to put under the lock. So I'm going to ink up just the top of this um, stamp, and I'm going to just come through here and kind of make my own design paper. So I'm going to do one, one face in that way, and then I'll come back and do one face in this way. And then I just thought this might be a neat way to get that blue that I don't have in a designer paper for myself, you know, just make it myself. And I think it'll look kind of cool. I don't want to emboss it because it's going to be holding that key, that lock, and I don't want anything to interfere with um, it gluing down well. So there, we just kind of made some designer paper. I'll hold that up so you can see that because it's kind of hard to see on the paper, but see what we did just using the top of that? I think that looks pretty. I like it. Okay, now then we'll glue that down and get our lock ready. So now I'm ready to put these guys on, but I'm not extremely happy with them just yet. There's something else I want to do to them. And I think it'll make them seem a little more meaty or a little more substantial. I'm going to glue this down to some chipboard. So this is the same chipboard I used to create the album itself. And I'm going to glue this guy in the corner. Because I need him to be a little more sturdy, a little more substantial. Because it was just a piece of paper, you know, that we put this on. So let me get him to stick real well. Now I'm going to take my Tim Holtz shears and cut this out. I can cut this chipboard fairly easy with these shears. I'm going to do the same thing with this key. Now it's going to be harder to cut out, but I think I will be happy in the end if I do this. And like I said, these mini albums are something we want to have for a long time. So sometimes you can put a little extra work into something and it won't hurt anything. So now I've got these guys cut out and I'm ready to put them on. And so this lock is going to go right here along that strip. I think that's pretty. So I'm going to glue it down real quick just like so then I'm gonna glue this key here let's go ahead and let me show you how I'm gonna do these little pieces here I'm gonna take these guys and I'm just gonna glue them in throughout the pages and I'm gonna put them into the inserts for the envelopes themselves and then this guy is ready to go I'm going to leave some spots in here, for example, here, so that whenever I put my pictures in, if I want to do some journaling, I can cut a little piece of cardstock and put it there with something about maybe what the picture was or what have you. There's one, and then on this page, I can put several on this page. So here, I'll show you how I plan to get two of these on. I'll take this one, and I'll glue one straight down, you know, directly onto the page like this. It can be at an angle or straight or what have you. 
Then this one I will glue, but anywhere it touches this, I won't seal it down. So from here to here, we won't put any glue. That way, whenever I put a photo here, it can slide under and I can still have them overlap each other. So you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna put some glue like this and like this and kind of to the side. So I'll put this here. And when this dries, we can bring a picture in and we'll be able to map that picture under there and that piece won't be glued down. So that's basically what I'm gonna do through the inside just to get this guy ready. And then I'm just gonna put my inserts in and we have a mini album. So check this out guys, I found this ribbon in my stash and it was sent to me by a subscriber actually. Isn't it beautiful? I think it's gorgeous. I wrapped it around the front here like this and I just tied a bow at the top. Then I found this charm that was sent to me by my friend Gareth at G's Embellishment Emporium and I'm gonna tie it to this bow using some brown baker swan. I think that'll be pretty and classy and simple and done actually at this point. I think it will look really good. So I'm gonna tie a knot at the bow first just so this won't slide around. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a good knot like so, okay? And then I'm gonna tie it around this. And I'm probably just gonna tie it fairly loose but not extremely loose. And I'm not gonna tie a bow. I'm gonna tie it a couple of times so it'll be nice and snug like that. And then I'm just gonna trim those tails away close this back up and that's it. I think that is cute. I love how that turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see what you guys make out of these guys. If you make an album just like this, I want to see it. Check that out. I have all my little photo spots in there. So it's ready to load up. All right. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.